Hey guys, what's up? V8 Merc here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the failure that I had with my AR style rifle. Uh, before we begin, we should go over some of the basic stuff about the rifle uh, so you guys have an understanding of what, what it's like. I mean, you guys have probably seen the videos of it. Uh, the last video I did before this one uh, it shows it at the 1000 round range report where I do mention the bolt failure, but this video will be the more in depth description of what happened and how it was resolved. Uh, but some basics on it are basically it's a 762 by 39 uh, chambered rifle, uh, 20 inch barrel, and um, other than that it's basically no different than any of the other AR. It has a muzzle brake on it, that's the only other thing. Um, but that's about it. So that's the basic stuff. So it's not 556 or 223, so you guys understand that. Um, so basically what happened was the bolt had broke from lugs number 1 and 7, which are on either side of the extractor, and uh, I have some footage here you guys can see of what exactly happened. So basically the the lugs just sheared off uh, on both sides, both at once when I fired the rounds. Um, now the round that I did fire is uh, a wolf, steel cased, 122-123 grain um, bullet. Uh, so nothing really too special or anything like that and that's basically the predominant ammo that I've been shooting through that rifle ever since I got it. So it basically had a thousand rounds on it. I think it was it was like either 900 and something rounds or a thousand and just a little bit over. So it was right in there at a thousand rounds. So um, fairly new, you know. I, I, well, I mean, I wouldn't say new, but it's it shouldn't see a failure like that so early on. Um, but basically, you know, it had the bo both lugs failed on on both sides, and uh, as you can see in the picture, that it's um, it basically just sheared right off. And I, I also show you guys the uh, the two lugs that broke off and and what they looked like. Now, as you'll see in the bolt face uh, in that in that uh, video right there, that there's some red stuff there. That's not rust or anything like that. That is uh, the primer sealer that came off of some of the ammunition that I shot. So it's not rust or anything like that. Um, so basically, that's what happened. And uh, how I resolved the issue was I called up Model One Sales and this is their catalog, this is an older catalog that I got. Called them up, I told them, you know, what the problem that I had. They said, alright, well, uh, what you need to do is uh, send us back the bolt, uh, actually the whole bolt carry group, make sure it's all clean and stuff, send it back and we'll take a look at it and we'll see if it's uh, possible that we can warranty it because um, sometimes it, it's an issue of the ammo, it's so they told me, and sometimes it's an issue of the bolt, um, you know, and the hardening process and probably got too hard to where it became brittle and that's why it, it experienced a problem. Uh, for example, Delton had a batch of bolts that um, would break. I forgot where they broke. I thought I thought I saw a picture somewhere of all the lugs sheared off of one bolt to where there was no lugs left on it. Um, I'm not sure if that was a Delton bolt but you know that's just a picture of something I saw and, and basically Delton just said you know send it back in. I'm, I'm telling you secondhand the story of what happened and they said send it back in and they gave them a new one because they knew they had a bad batch of bolts. So Model 1 didn't say that they had a bad batch or anything like that but they said we'll take a look at it and we'll see if it's uh, worthy of, if it's uh, possible for us to warranty it for you um, to make sure it's not my error on my part that I did something wrong but it was the product itself. Um, but uh, basically I sent it in I think within a week or about a week or so they sent me back my bolt carrier with this bolt in it and uh, basically that means that they did warranty it, they didn't tell me anything about it, why it broke or anything like that so I have no idea exactly why it broke and I don't have a full understanding of why just the two lugs broke but um, from what I've been looking around and seeing from what I interpret it's not possibly it's probably the same thing with the Delton ones, the hardening process on that bolt and that batch of bolts possibly uh, the lugs were weaker because it got too hard and it became brittle. When you when you harden something too much, they get brittle. Uh, as far as it being an MPI bolt, uh, magnetic particle inspected bolt, I have no idea. It wasn't stamped MPI, so I'm going to assume not, that it wasn't. I don't know where they get their bolts from, so I don't know if it's a uh, reputable bolt manufacturer or anything like that. And my assumption is that these bolts probably come from the same place that many other ones do. The only difference is that probably it's not MPI or maybe it is, I don't know. So that's basically what I'm telling you that it wasn't stamped MPI or anything like that. The one that they sent me back now actually is stamped 762 by 39. Uh, the other one wasn't stamped like that. Um, 
other than that, I mean, it's just basically the same. I really can't tell any differences from that one and this one, maybe color or anything like that. But uh, those are the only differences I see. So they may be getting their bolts from somewhere else now when compared to when I got it in, I think, 2010, uh, which was a little while ago. Um, but uh, they basically did well on their part for uh, warranting it, seeing as that it, I mean, I didn't abuse it or anything like that. So um, I'm really excited about that, that they actually did warranty for it, warranty it for me. Uh, but the thing was, this failure actually happened in January of 2013, and uh, that was about the time when, or you know, December of 2012, that was about the time that we had, you know, a big issue in the, in the firearms market, and it was hard to get parts, and it was actually hard to get, hold, uh, get a hold of Model 1 sales, so I had to wait so long to get their address, the proper address, to send the stuff into, and I finally got it sent about uh, a couple months ago. It's, uh, what is it now, uh, October, so I sent it around November sometime, I think mid-November, it wasn't August, it was November, so it was a month ago, and, uh, the, you know, the turnaround time was a week or so, and uh, they sent it back, you know, just like this, and there really is uh, not much to, other than, not much to talk about other than that they did warranty it, they did do well on their part, uh, they didn't hassle me for it and say, oh no, you know, it's because you use such and such ammo, um, that you had that problem or you, you know, abused it or something like that. They uh, stood by it, which is, um, I don't know, for me it was kind of surprising. I wasn't sure if they were going to warranty it because uh, the way, the, well, not the way the guy spoke on the phone, but um, when they said that I have to send it in, and I was just expecting them to say, one, you know, once I send it in, they say, oh, we had our technician look at it, and he said that it's not the bolt that failed, you know, it's... Uh, wear tear, normal wear tear or something like that. So uh, so I was pretty excited about that. The other thing I was kind of concerned about was that the extractor itself didn't break and I was thinking that that was the thing that was going to break because those are the stories you hear about ARs and steel cased ammo but if you really think about it um, the steel using the bolts is going to be much tougher uh, either it's going to be a higher quality and it's going to be a harder steel uh, hard into a you know a hard a harder uh, uh, number on the scale. I think it's measured in Brunel or Rockwell hardness or something. It's one of the two or something like that. But basically this steel is harder than the steel cases used in ammunition. Just like how bra brass is softer than steel, you need the steel for steel case ammo to be softer than the, me the metal of the gun you're using. So yes it is steel, it's going to be harder than brass, but it's going to be softer than uh, the steel you're using here. So if you really do think about it, this extractor shouldn't wear out because this is going to be a, it's going to be hardened to a higher degree than the steel used for for the ammunition. So you shouldn't see any problems with the extractor wearing out. Now, if you do, the extractor costs what five bucks. So you know you could probably get away you know at least a thousand rounds. You know I didn't see any experience, any problems within a thousand rounds with my extractor because I I examined it and compared it to my Super Bolt here, and they look relatively the same. They didn't look too different to me. So it did last a thousand rounds. So say it does, I don't know, wear out in three, four thousand rounds. The amount of money you saved um, buying steel case ammo and the five dollar extractor, to me it just works out. So and if you're wondering about the extractor issue, I think it's kind of worth it to just buy the steel case ammo and to use it. I think the bolt failure that I experienced was probably, like I said before, it's probably because of its hardening, um, temp, you know, the tempering that they did. Uh, I don't think it had anything to do with the ammo type or anything like that that I used. So, um, but that's just my opinion. So, if you guys actually know why those kinds of failures happen, because they don't just happen on these bolts in 7.62x39, but they also happen on 556 five, bolts. And they also even happen right here um, where the cam pin goes, the bolt will actually break in half. Uh, so, it's not uncommon to see bolt lug failures. Now, one thing, if uh, some of you guys may know this, uh, the difference between a 5.56 five, bolt or 2.23 bolt and this this bolt is uh, now I don't have one for comparison's sake, so I can't show you, but I can describe it to you, and I'll try to roll in some close-up uh, footage of this. Basically, they take for the 7.62 by 39 bolts, they take the 5.56 five, or 2.23 ones. Uh, maybe they're making them custom now, or you know, uh, one-offs but they would open up the bolt face here to allow more room for the head case head of the 762 by 39 round and if you do that then you what you do is you're you get a pointing tool here 
you're reducing the sidewall thickness of the bolt which is making this part right here thinner and which is probably a reason why one of these lugs here can break uh, can shear off because it's weaker here now so that's probably one also other factor that could have played into why it broke now uh, you may be wondering why I bought a super bolt and, and I'm gonna say super bolt quote unquote um, basically the difference between this bolt and this bolt is that this one well I'm assuming this one is made of carpenter 158 steel um, which should be industry standard for bolts uh, that's what I'm assuming here this one I know is made out of 9310 steel which does sound like it's a super super strong steel but in uh, research in research that I've done some people are saying that the C158 and the in the 9310 are relatively the same there may be like an 8% 5% uh, difference between the two where the 9310 might be a little bit stronger or some people are saying that it's either the same or even less the 9310 may be less so basically the general consensus is that they're almost the same and that the whole reason why people sell it is because 9310 you know someone wants to say oh I got a super bolt in my gun you know or I have a, a 9000 series steel in my in my uh, in, in the internals in my rifle but there's also another reason why you would probably want something like this and the other reason is uh, at least this is what they advertise that the the wall here um, is thicker and the lugs are kind of shaped different so they're stronger than the original 762 by 39 bolts so this is supposed to be stronger than these bolts and it's supposed to last uh, much longer than these ones do and they say oh I've heard 60,000 rounds is what the rumor is and I've heard that JP uses JP rifles uses uh, 9310 bolts as well as I think LMT and possibly other companies um, not sure exactly which other ones but uh, they claim don't hold me to this but something around like 60,000 rounds and that it's like 15 or 30 percent um, more stronger and that it can last you know 30 percent longer than one of these or it's some astronomically large number that they say uh, does it I don't know I don't know if I'll ever get to 30,000 rounds or 60,000 rounds uh, anytime soon but that's what the claims are um, but for most people you know if you're a recreational sh shooter I recommend just replacing your bolt. If you do f experience a problem, if you know it doesn't matter what caliber it is, probably just go back and just get some, you know, get a reputable manufacturer that has an M that is stamped MPI, or they, you know, make sure that uh, that they do have MPI bolts, and just buy the thirty, forty dollar one. You don't have to buy the hundred twenty dollar one. That's how much this one costs, according to the research I did. That's what I'm taking away from my research. That's what I have learned. Um, but you know, that's just me. As far as the extractor here, you guys may have noticed that it is a different color. I don't know what the steel quality is here. It looks like it might be stainless. I'm not too sure. The extractor differences between this one and the original one, there's a slight difference to where this one has a little bit more of a bite, you know, kind of grabs the case a little bit better. Um, but, you know, functionally they seem to be the same. Um, they just have the same single spring in the back. They don't have the D defender ring back here. So they're really not too different. So the only difference here is basically the thicker wall and the different shape of the lug. And on this one and this one, when you kind of take a closer look, you'll see that the original one has more square lugs and the uh, Super Bolt has like a, a rounded lug and there seems to be more material around it. So you guys can see those differences and probably you'll see other differences that I may have not mentioned. Um, but that's basically it there on the back. They're relatively the same. Let me move this one this way, you can kind of see it. And uh, they got the three rings here for the gas seal. And they're really no different than each other. Um, but I just want to show you guys the failure that I had and how um, Model 1 handled the warranty. And that was really the most important part of the video that I wanted to show you guys was their, how they handled the warranty. Um, I was going to make the video regardless if they were going to say that we're not going to cover it. And this, you know, they actually covered it. So I made the video still, you know, it wasn't going to be any different. So I just want to put that out there. And I also kind of wanted to go over the differences between these two based on the research that I have done. So like I said before, if you guys know something about possibly the bolt failures and why they happen, it's, you know, particularly with the lugs and stuff like that, because it's not, you know, specific to this you know, only 762 by 39 please leave it below so that I know, and more importantly, that other viewers that come along to this video and watch it, that they'll be able to see it in the comment section, and hopefully they'll be able to take away something from the video overall. They may have learned, they will learn something 
uh, from the video. You know, maybe not from me, but from you if you're more knowledgeable on that subject matter. And the other part of the video is just to make sure that you guys um, kind of get the lowdown on these super bolts that are selling. And by the way, if you're looking for an AR super bolt, they don't have them anymore. Airperformance.com doesn't have them. I think I bought the last one or one of the last ones because about a few weeks later I never saw them on their website. They actually took down the um, the uh, ad for it and they don't have them anymore. They do have for 6.5 Grendel, 6.8 and I think 5.56. They probably have it for that one too. If you are looking for a manufacturer that makes a higher quality bolt or is claimed to be making a higher quality bolt, um, I think the name of the company is Carson Engineering. Um, you know what? I don't know the exact name. I'm not going to say it, so I don't know if it's Carson. What I'll, what I'll have you do is check the description below, and I will put down the link to their website there. I did look at it, and it's to me, from my understanding, they don't claim it's a 9310 series steel on their bolt, that they're using um, a bolt, so they're not saying what steel. I'm going to assume it's also C158, and that they're hard chroming it, so it has a harder chrome surface, so it's going to be more durable, and I don't Man, I don't remember exactly if they do have a thicker wall here or not. Um, but that's basically what it is. It's a hard chrome surface, so it's supposed to be you know, really strong and last a long time. That bowl goes for $130. I think it's stripped $130. If you want the extractor and the pins and the, and the, and the rings on the back and everything, um, I think it, it's going to total around $158, $150 or something like that. So it's still pretty expensive for just a chrome bolt based off the off of the little synopsis they give you next to the product. So maybe it's made of a different steel. I didn't see it in there at that time. I mean, right now we're October you know, 13th, and up until now I haven't seen anything, any claims made by the type of steel that they use. Um, I just did remember something. Um, on this bolt here, you'll notice that there is a taper on the bolt face right in here. If you guys can see that taper, um, and, it, and what it does is it makes it look like the walls are thin, right? And then when you compare it to this one, this one doesn't have a taper to it, so it makes it look like these walls are thicker. But if you notice the taper on here, kind of, let me see if I can move it. You guys can see the angle right there. They may end up being actually the same thickness. But there definitely is a difference in the lugs, um, that these lugs are thicker than these ones. So I thought I would point that out to you guys and let you guys make your own uh, conclusion off of that. So that's the video basically for you guys today. Um, again, any comments, questions, please leave them below. And I gotta say this one more time. If you do know something that I don't know that I didn't mention, please leave it in the comments below. Hopefully it helps out someone else. All right guys, talk to you later. VA Merck, signing out.